and we're going to spend a bit of time uh, thinking about stock portfolios and in particular the valuation of stock portfolios in the current uh, inflationary environment. Um, so Laurie, I'll, I'll kick off with you if I may. Um, with inflation at its 30 year peak, energy prices at an all time high and still rising and container prices significantly above uh, where they were at pre-COVID levels. How are you seeing uh, these issues translate into uh, retailers valuing their stock portfolios? Thanks, Neil. Yes. Yeah, so uh, if we go to the, um, the basic principle that um, stock is valued at the lower of cost and net realizable value, cost essentially is that purchase price plus freight and duty. And with duty increases post Brexit, you could also be impacted by those high freight prices, particularly in that peak over the summer, uh, if you've still got that stock to sell through as well on your balance sheet. Yeah. And um, many of our retailers have uh, sort of bought ahead of the curve, given all the challenges that um, they've been facing over the last few years. How does that feed through into valuation issues? Yeah, so it comes back again to that basic principle and the net realizable value piece around have you got too much stock and therefore are you going to need to discount it heavily against that um, inflated price to be able to sell it through um, and also to attract consumer um, spend as well. So it's really taken into account and reviewing your year end inventory valuation carefully to check firstly, have you got overvalued stock that you're going to have to sell at a lower value? And secondly, have you got excess stock? And I have heard of businesses that have taken um, extra warehouses to deal with the supply chain um, issues, really. And, and that could cause overstocking if that hasn't been sold through. Yeah. And Laura, turning to you, um, what, what are you seeing from a transaction perspective in this area? It's interesting. It's definitely making life interesting and our discussions interesting. Um, okay. So the one thing that is interesting when we look at the cost of shipping is that we've already started to see that move away from the peak that we saw in the summer of last year. And what we're doing is we're we're carefully tracking that. We have quarterly updates that we're issuing to the market. And what we're doing this quarter is actually going to our clients, to businesses in the sector and getting real tangible data as to what are people actually paying, both in forward buying and, and spot rate containers at the moment. But it is moving. It has moved quite considerably. And so what we're having to do is work very hard to make sure that we can position the business on what are the actual margins that people are going to be achieving in businesses in the longer term. Because for 2022, um, the, the number of discussions that I'm having with clients are that revenue probably will grow 2022, um, but the actual underlying profitability of the business will be significantly lower because of just every cost impact that is coming onto the essentially the books of businesses but stock being one of those big issues as Laurie said where if you really really don't understand what that cost of product is then the margins are going to be even lower than you're expecting which when we get into the latter stages of this year and start looking at working capital and reinvestment back into the stock cycle people are going to be short on cash which means that they're just going to be able to they're probably going to have a period to which their growth could then become flatter as they don't have the level of investment they'd like to make just because of this year being probably one of the most expensive years in the sector that we're, we've seen for some time. Yeah, lovely. Um, and in, in terms of picking up that point on uh, having cash tied up in stock, Sarah, do you, do you want to comment on what that means from an asset back lending perspective? Yeah, sure. So uh, one of the alternatives to uh, just using uh, your cash is obviously to have an asset based lending inventory financing, but they, they will, uh, 
those financiers will look at stock in a different way from um, the, the valuation necessarily on the, on the balance sheet. They will look at what are you actually likely to, how are you, what is that stock going to realize? So yes, of course they take into account, the, the appraisal will take into account what is sat on in the balance sheet, but they will look at the realizable value. So what facilities are available to a business will be dependent on what they have calculated looking at the liquidated valuation of, of that stock. So if, if a business, and we've heard, we have heard um, uh, of businesses where they have, um, they've taken a stock finance facility and the borrower has then materially in, increased, increased material costs for the reason for doing so. And that then gave them a much bigger headroom because they had a higher valuation of stock um, available to them. And the lender then said, well, no, that doesn't quite work because actually let's look at what do we think the realizable value of that stock is going to be and actually then significantly reduced um, the, the headroom that was available. So in terms of um, the facilities that are available, it's just realizing that you, retailers have to be close to the actual valuation and what, what is going to be achieved in terms of getting the, those, those facilities from the asset-based lenders and the, and the lending um, community is obviously really hot on this um, currently. Yeah, and following that theme through, Sarah, um, linked to lending, a lot of our retail clients will, will have covenant reporting requirements. So how do these issues play out in, in that scenario? It just comes back to if you're not on top of your stock valuation and you're reporting and making sure you've got the right value in, in, in your accounts, that will um, result in possibly volatile um, information in the management accounts. When those management accounts are then used for covenant um, reporting purposes and so that, so that it can give a, a misstated position to the lenders. So it's key that both businesses and lenders understand what is actually going on within the business and that the business is reporting, you know, so the lenders don't want to have nasty surprises stored up when there's an adjustment on the balance sheet. So it's really key that businesses are on top of the real valuation, which goes back to where Laura and Laurie would, were talking before about adjusting as to what, what, is, what is the true picture super um and then finally uh based on your experience and discussions with with clients uh and laurie i'll come to you first for this um what what sort of top tips would you leave the audience for managing uh stock in this current climate from my perspective it it would be don't leave it till the year end <laughs> to check that your stock valuation it accurately takes into account the freight and duty at the point in per at the point of purchase and also that you are doing an adequate provision review not just on a net realizable value basis but also whether you do have any st excess stock and laura i think it for retailers, cash is king in a lot of ways. And I think there could be some real hesitancy this year of clearing down stock when we take Sophie's earlier session on, are we going to see a slight decline in the ability for the consumer to continue to spend at the pace that they perhaps have? And just sitting on stock because you, it is technically more expensive than you'd like it to be is only going to Give you quite a big headache as you move forward. I think the key for me is to therefore make sure that you really understand the underlying cost and so then when you are going into the market perhaps looking to do sell through that you know why you're putting the discounts on but also what that means and what that ultimate underlying cash balance is going to be when you come back to to want to put that back into new stock and stock that actually is going to be at a lower value. And for, for retailers and, and consumer brands that get this right, what we are gonna see is the ability to increase costs. So you know, prices of products will increase this year, we'll have to, uh, to mitigate some of this. But 
some of these costs will come down again. So actually, if you get this right, the business underlying all of this cost of product will mean that long-term profitability should increase for businesses, but it's gonna take some work and it definitely is about the detail. Yeah, great. And Sarah, any final thoughts from you? It really follows on from um, what Laura's just said. Um, we would say robust forecasting that could be sensitized so you understand exactly what's going on with your business, understand how your capital is being um, um, tied up, working capital is being tied up, how, looking at seeing how you can minimize costs, um, hold costs, and whether there's areas of the business that you can um, release um, costs from. And that goes back to one of the points that Tom mentioned, which was uh, looking at the supply chain, you know, a, a full procurement um, review. Um, Tom was looking at it from an ESG perspective. We would be looking at it from a cost perspective and whether or not there's some sort of um, cost savings that, that can be um, generated from that. So it's really just being vigilant with your businesses over the, the coming months, which are going to be hard, as we all just said. Thank you all. Um, we'll pause there and uh, lots of food for thought and uh, it continues to be a very challenging topic.